If you've picked up a copy of the Daily Hampshire Gazette in the past month, you might have seen article after article after article about East Hampton High School. If you have friends or family in East Hampton, you might have heard murmurings about a fight, a walkout, and an outcry. But what's really going on at East Hampton High? I'm Elena Fragamini. Let's find out. No hate here! No hate here! No hate here! No. East Hampton High School lies just a few miles away from Northampton High. Population demographics are similar to Northampton, with Northampton being slightly more diverse and overall more college educated. However, 30% of East Hampton voters voted for Trump in the 2016 presidential election, compared to about 12% of Northampton voters. As East Hampton City Councilman Salem Derby says, these voters have felt galvanized post-election. As a city councilor, where, and I'm a progressive city councilor, I've never really encountered any sort of opposition like I have in the last few months, where uh, this small portion of our community has felt very vocal and felt, I feel like they've been empowered. This rise in Trumpian rhetoric isn't exclusive to the East Hampton voting population. Since Election Day, it's taken root at East Hampton High School. And as far as how it translated to the high school, I think a lot of this mis misinformation that was in people's homes from the media that they consume, which is not necessarily fact-based media, uh, was tr trickling down to their kids. And their kids were acting out on it. Um, and you know, so my son, who goes to East Hampton High School, was experiencing some of these things in his classes. And they were scary. Um, kids, you know, saying, hail Trump. And in class, writing swastikas on boards, uh, saying like chanting build the wall to kids as they were walking down the hallway, um, saying the N-word, and then saying, well, we can say it because it's in music and they say it. East Hampton High School is about 81% white, 2.3% African American, and 11% Hispanic. The school does not have a Students of Color Alliance. These months of post-election tensions hit a boiling point in a racially charged incident in March. It's been two weeks since a student who allegedly used a racial slur on social media was physically assaulted by several other students in the school parking lot. Three students were arrested on assault and battery charges. For many students and parents, the concerning part about this incident was how it was handled by leadership. The police report states that the principal himself pushed for charges to be pressed. The charges that were pressed were noticeably heavy. One of the students involved is over 18 and was charged as an adult with a misdemeanor assault and battery charge and a felony charge of intimidating a witness. You know, from my perspective, um, do I feel the charges were warranted considering the scope of the um, incident? I, I don't. I don't think that a schoolyard fight, which consisted of, you know, the main part was three punches, um, rose to the level of a felony. And this is a discussion I've had with the police chief. He disagrees with me. He said, uh, you know, my perception is, you know, when you have the son of the school resource officer standing without any resistance, getting hit three times by three students of color, and then those students of color are charged with a felony for intimidating a witness. To add another layer to this incident, the student who was hit in the fight is the son of the school resource officer. Some members of the community worry about how this will affect how he does his job. It does seem that if you know, he's involved in some of these incidents and, and the school resource officer is the one who's supposed to be the kind of neutral safe ground, that doesn't seem like it matches very well. On March 30th, students at East Hampton High School walked out to advocate for diversity. I think many students walked out in support of diversity and coming together as a student body knowing that we don't support racism, intolerance in any form. And that's why I walked out and I think that's why a lot of my friends and half the student body walked out. At school committee meetings, parents who are part of a group called Parents for East Hampton Public Schools called for the firing of East Hampton High Principal Kevin Burke and submitted documents detailing what they say are hate crimes at East Hampton High and protesting the way in which they were handled. Repeated requests for interviews with the mayor and the superintendent of East Hampton were not answered. And as far as the administration's response, you know, I'm not going to make any specific statements about the, the school leadership team. I know that right now the the um, superintendent and the school committee are working really hard and, and they're pretty committed to trying to fix what's going on. But at the end of the day, I feel like these kids 
were set up and let down um, because this climate that was allowed to fester and it was not dealt with resulted in the culmination event, which was the fight. In response, the school committee has hired a consultant to help the school investigate the incident. These reactions are not the aftermath to an incident. East Hampton is still very much in the thick of this conflict. Recently, the East Hampton School Committee placed a ban on the Confederate flag in East Hampton public schools until the end of the school year, after which the school committee will develop a long-term policy. Um, I think that um, it is a symbol of unsafety and intolerance and racism, and I, that's my just personal views, but I think that any symbol that causes that big of a spark of reaction from both sides. Like obviously at the school committee, I don't know if you watched it, it is online. Um, both sides who supported the Confederate flag being worn or flown and those who banned it had a really big emotional attachment to it. You know, some of the people talked about free speech and the slippery slope, um, but it wasn't about, I mean, from my perspective, it's not about, <clears throat> free speech is something in the public square that's, that's completely appropriate, you know? Um, because you can turn around and walk away. If you're in a school, you're compelled to be there by law. Um, so it's a different situation. The student who was charged as an adult will remain on pre-trial probation until the end of the calendar year, which allows him to settle his case without a conviction and will complete a restorative justice program in addition to agreeing not to abuse the victim and pay a $200 fee.